it's your boy Delight, and I just want to share the story that I saw um, this morning. And this one's talking about um, this wellness with um, June seventh, two thousand twenty-one. Just you know, not too long ago, a couple of days ago. And this talks about co-workers. Um, the title of it is Co-Workers Donate Their Kidneys to Save Each Other's Husbands. Now, I want to play this video because these were two co-workers. One named Susan um, Ellis, um, the Caucasian lady here um, in the blue. And, um, and Tia um, Wimbush, um, the African-American young lady here in the peach. And... Uh, They've been working together, you know, for about a decade or so in the Children's Health Center of Atlanta. And I mean, and so happened one of the supervisors um, kind of hooked them up. But I want you to see this video here and give me your input. I have a family of four. and We've been married for 19 years. Call it sweethearts. And I have two boys. They are the loves of my life, all three of them. The day that I was alerted that he was having a medical crisis, that particular morning, he wasn't feeling well. You know, I just felt like I was just dead. I just feel bad. You know, I go to the nurse. I went over there. She took my BP, and it was you know, like really, really high. My father-in-law came to the school, and he took me to the hospital. They did all the tests they do and stuff like that, and then that's when they mentioned to me that my kidney. that his kidneys were failing. Lance and I got married last year. Lance came into the marriage with a dog and I came into the marriage with two girls. I knew Lance was ill when we first started dating. He had already had a transplant in January of 2017. We didn't get a honeymoon. We spent the next day after we got married in the hospital, which started a series of hospital visits for Lance. When I went to the hospital to see if maybe I needed fluids or something, they told me that I was in really bad kidney failures. Uh, my creatinine was very high. I had to get a permacath and went back through dialysis for the second time and every day, week, just gradually got more and more sick. What happens is you have to plan your life around dialysis and it's not just my husband's life. All of our lives are planned around him being able to get that treatment. It's about seven to nine years people wait for a kidney. For those seven to nine years you're living on dialysis, most people will probably not live that long on dialysis. My manager is just, just amazingly loving and caring. She knew about Tia's story. Right. So I think she got your permission to share with yes. me. Yes, Susan popped by my desk and the connection was instantaneous. We crossed paths in the restroom and we were, you know, washing our hands and we started having the conversation about where my husband and I were in the transplant evaluation process. But with that, we started talking about um, blood types during that process. And Susan mentioned that her husband, Lance, is O negative. And it was like a light bulb moment went off in my head and I was thinking, I'm O. And she said that she's A and my husband is a also so literally we were just like okay let's well go. we didn't tia had the light bulb moment susan just kept washing her hands like okay yeah and then tia said what if we did our own exchange and sure enough tia went back to her desk and called her donor coordinator and we got that all set up We were, you know, getting ready to walk in and Susan was there right before I went in, maybe 30 minutes before they wilted me back. The doctor came in and told me that Susan and Rodney were doing great, that her kidney had been, you know, removed and that they were preparing to, to do the, the transplant and that everything was going well. The first question that I asked when I woke up 
wasn't about Lance because Lance hadn't gone back to surgery yet. First question I asked was, how's Rodney? And my kidney took great, which is amazing. And then I had a number of hours to wait for my husband to get out of surgery. Um, and Tia's kidney that went into Lance also took right away. Um, that was a relief. The first time I spoke to Tia was the next day. And I walked down the hallway where Rodney's room was to say hello to him. And Tia and Rodney were together in his room. Um, and Rodney gave me a smile and a thumbs up and that, that felt, that felt really big cool to see that. It's a story of kindness. Had Tia and I had that basic of basic conversations in the restroom while we were washing our hands of just checking in with each other, perhaps this would have not evolved into the magnitude that it has. What I hope people take away is that they will consider that they could be someone else's answer prayer. They could be someone else's hope. And all it takes is just a conversation, a kind word. Your one act can help that one person. Now, with that being said, um, God knew who, what he was doing when that um, took place. You know, you know, it wasn't just coincidental, but it was divine appointment that these two women worked together for decades, but then both of their husbands needed kidney transplant. So it happened, Susan matched Tia's husband in being O, and what was that? Tia matched Susan's husband by being A. So that was God's intervention right there. And um, like I said, God just know, he know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And both of them, you know, agreed to, you know, do it. And both of them went through with it. They are true, true, true warriors, true heroes. And I really, really, really wanted just to share this story because it have something positive, you know, to give to it. I mean, we hear about so much of the other stuff that goes on in the world. And, you know, we keep, you know, informing that as well. But I want to share something on a positive note right here. So hats off to uh, Susan Ellis and Tia. Um, um Wimbush um just for you know doing the act of kindness that you've done for one another and God bless both of you ladies and your husbands and may they continue to have long life to come and and a perfect healing and I you know, God speedy recovery for both both brothers and uh, I'm just truly grateful for the story and I just had to share it all right, everybody, remember, do right by yourself, and you have no choice but to do right by others. Make it a great day or not, the choice is yours, so let's make it a great day. And let's continue to treat each other with respect and love. Just like the love and kindness that was shown amongst the co-workers in the video. Let us show that same type of love towards one another. That's the agape love, the unconditional love, the love that God wants us to show. So remember that. Be kind to others and be kind to yourself. Until we meet again, peace.